It's 6 a.m. out in the garden, Friday morning, and I've got some special guests coming on Sunday, so I want to do something nice. Um, I did say we would take a little tour of the garden. Nothing massive, but let's just have a quick look around. Starting down here, you got these beautiful red scallions. Some of these are getting ready to pick. We'll do that this weekend. Uh, the garlic's almost ready to pull. Napa cabbage. Big row of that. I really want to make some kimchi. Um, there's dill all over the place, which makes me happy. Just volunteer. I mean, that came up, but this patch is just banging. So I'll dry a bunch. I'll use a bunch. Broccoli. As you saw, we, we picked some of that, but it continues to reflower. Get some new heads. Probably do some of that on Sunday. Arugula is all going to flower, but you know what? The flowers are delicious and a great little garnish. Mmm. Mmm. They taste just like the arugula, but they also have a sweetness from the flower petal. Looking like a real good potato year. And all the tomatoes. I was out here with the hose last night. We've had somewhat of a little mini drought, but it's supposed to rain for the next five, six days in a row. Here's our leeks. More dill. Things are just really starting to pick up, but it has been unusually cold. Some volunteer potato. They were back here last year. Uh, over here, just getting up and running are some cucumber. Bunch of nice radishes. We'll have a radish salad with dill and yogurt. Zucchini's getting banging, and boy, does that grow fast once it heats up. Green beans. Carrots here, carrots here. The lettuces, I've just been eating salads every day at work. Um, peas, looking good. More lettuce. Had a couple of tomatillo plants come up volunteer over by the geranium bed up front. So I moved them over. And they look like they're already getting some fruit on them. So there we go. Oh, some beautiful La Sinata kale. Nice garden this year. Last night I came in and seeded three rows of beets right here. So there it is, the nickel tour. But I'm out here this morning bright and early because, as I said, I do have guests coming Sunday. And I want to make a little mint pesto. So let's grab some mint. Come on. Let's do it. Come on. Let's do it. All right. Mint. As you know, this is like a type of spearmint I have. It's nice and young, nice and sweet. And mint is a basically invader. It goes crazy. So this is a good way to keep it at bay and use it up. So what I'll do is I'll snip a bunch and bring it on into the kitchen. We'll see you there. Right, we got our beautiful mint. Now I want to wash it down. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to strip it off these stems, which with mint is real easy. Just go backwards, this way, away from the top. Just grab these top leaves and go straight down. Okay, top ones I can pull off. And, uh, I'll get these all in the bowl, and I'll see you all over at the sink. We'll fill this up with cold water, get all that debris, all that garden soil off them. You want just the leaves, no stem, and we'll wash them up. All right, look at that bowl of fresh picked early morning mint leaves. I tell you, standing over a bowl like this at 6.15 in the morning, stripping these things down, Woo, what a way to wake up, invigorated. So now what I'm gonna do is fill this with cold water. 
give them a good shake because I want as much to fall off them as possible and I'll give it a rinse. Do that a few times. We'll do three for good measure. Get all our leaves in there. So that water looks semi-clear. And then what I'll do is fill this to the brim with this nice cold water, agitate them a little more, and this way, gonna let any further debris settle on the bottom of the bowl. And then we'll wash them again and put them through the salad spinner. I want every little speck of dirt off of these before they get blended up into a pesto. So they're kind of floating. Debris should settle to the bottom. And then we'll drain them off. All right, I got a nice pot of water boiling here. Good hard roll and boil. What we want to do is blanch these leaves for about 40 seconds. So I'm just going to pop them in. Count it down. And then right here, I've got a nice bowl of cold water. It could have ice in it. But I just have it as cold as I can get out of the tap. So I'll just give these a little blanch. That ought to be good. I'm not really counting or timing. What was that? 20? 20 seconds? We'll give it a little more. This is called blanch and shock. And mainly what it does for your green vegetables is it sets the chlorophyll. So you should be able to keep a nice bright green color to it. So transfer them into the cold water and let them shock. And that sets the green. Nothing worse than a like gray pesto or a black pesto. So hopefully, if all goes according to plan, we can set in that nice bright green mint color and hold it through the pesto. So we'll just let those cool for a minute. And now I'm going to put them back through my sieve. Squeeze out as much water as possible. Now look at that, all those mint leaves, we're just going to get a drop of pesto. But the flavor is going to be so potent that you don't need much on whatever you're using it on. And trust me, there's tons of mint out there. I could be making this all summer, every week. All right, let me bring this to the cutting board now. I've decided I'm not going to use the blender on this pesto. This is just going to be a chopped, rustic pesto. And, you know, the traditional Genovese pesto is made with basil, extra virgin olive oil, pignoli nuts, cheese. This is going to be a simple, I want this brightness of this fresh, young mint. Uh, so this is going to be four ingredients, okay? This chopped mint, extra virgin olive oil, salt, and pepper. That's it. So I'm going to give this a good chop. And then i got to get ready for work. This is Friday morning, so 6.45 now. So what I'm going to do... Give this as fine a chop as possible. I squeezed out a good amount of the water. But what I'll do now, after it's chopped, is I'll spread it out into as thin a layer as possible and just let it air dry while I go get ready for work. All right, looking pretty good. Smelling, I can't even describe.
fresh mint. All right, I'm heading up to get ready. We'll deal with this when I get back downstairs. Showered up and ready to go. Friday morning, TGIFF, -F, no typo. Got my mint in this nice little ball jar. It dried beautifully on the counter while well, I got myself ready and I chopped it up a little bit more. Get some of that morning sunlight in there. Look at that. It's a beautiful morning. We're supposed to get days and days of rain. We're supposed to start yesterday. And trust me, we want rain. Um, let's bring this back over to the board. Come on, let's do it. Come on, let's do it. I just realized we're at the marble, not the board technically, but this is a board, so safe there. Let me move this. This is uh, the last of the spinach. I grabbed yesterday. I'll figure out what to do with that. That might be used just to flavor some pasta. It's not that much to make a dish out of. So let's add a little bit of salt, just kosher salt, just a pinch to start. We want to taste black pepper and extra virgin olive oil. Start with enough to mix. And then we'll figure out our consistency from there. With this little spoon. Definitely more oil. I gotta watch this top, it falls off. I need a new one. Not the right top for this jar. Coming together, more oil, and then I'll give it a taste for the seasonings. There we go, generous with the extra virgin. Now it's starting to look like a pesto. Now let's give this a taste. I'm realizing now with the light coming in out of the window, you're not getting the green too well. It's getting shadowed off. But I'll move it over for a... Now let's see what we got here, seasonings. Mm. Oh, beautiful. Salt is perfect. I nailed it. More olive oil. Oh, it's got a pungent bite to it. Minty. Beautiful. And it's going to sit until tonight. Absorb those seasonings. Marry with the oil. Let me move this camera over here. Try to get you a little bit of the color. It darkened up a bit. That's natural with a pesto, but the shock did hold some of the green. Making a mess already. Seven o'clock in the morning. Let me give it one more taste. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful. I might add a little fresh oil when I get home, just before the dish. I'll see you tonight. Mission aborted. <laughs> it's Sunday. It's already 1230 and these guests are rolling in around 4 p.m. And since I filmed all that stuff early on Friday morning, I went into a whirlwind of a weekend because Marble Town boys are back, baby. We had a gig for my friend's daughter's college graduation. What a fun time on Saturday. Um, here, take a look. since the day she was born. Old friends, we used to play a lot of parties over there back in the day, and uh, boy, did we have a hoot. However, we spent a few days rehearsing for that gig, and then I've been cleaning the house, prepping the grounds, trying to get ready for these special guests today. So let's do it this way. Let's conclude the show this way. I'm not gonna, you saw the mint pesto. I'll tell you what I'm doing with it. 
and I can make a little spoiler tease and try to drag you back here next Sunday. So that mint pesto, I have these beautiful, I think I talked about Rossi's Deli in Poughkeepsie, the Rossi's homemade ravioli, and look at this, spring pea ravioli. These things are phenomenal. Okay, Poughkeepsie, New York, Rossi's Deli, world famous. Um, semolina, eggs, filling is peas, mint, regatta, pecorino, pesto with arugula, parsley, basil. Look at this, man. And so here's what I'm going to do. The guests are coming today. I got several great courses. This is going to be one course, uh, primi piatti. And so you saw that filling. We got the pesto as arugula, parsley, basil. So I'm going to serve these on a plate with a little of that mint pesto. Some of the spring peas, the garden peas are ready, fresh shelled. Give them a little boil. Garnish with the peas, the mint pesto, and the little arugula flowers that you saw in the beginning of the show. And then I have, I don't have pecorino, but I have some nice parmigiano reggiano that will shave on top. So, and then this is the shh part. I have an idea for next week's show. I hope it's going to work. I'm going to have the guests discuss the dish. So next week, you'll see the reaction to this dish. So come on back. We'll see you for the next episode. Come on, let's do it. We ain't going nowhere. Yeah.